Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. So this is a little tangent, and um, you know, I just wanted to share this with you guys because I just thought this was interesting. And we're going to link a video um, from another uh, video channel that did a, a deep dive into uh, this inventor who is really, really curious. So you see this. This is from Illuminati Bot, a walking through walls patent. In order to pull the body out of a dimension so that it may pass through solid, apparently solid objects. And again, this is a real patent and it's actually done by uh, somebody that, uh, <laughs> that had put out there a lot of curious patents over the years. And Cindy's been able to get some info about him. But before we give you Cindy's info, um, I just found this uh, to be curious because, again, what are we looking at? We're looking at chakras, and he described chakras as, as vortices, the interdimensional vortices, which they are. And, again, uh, in our you know, times now, we understand chakras. I go back to my youth, and, and people thought that, you know, just even talking about chakras was just woo-woo and pseudoscience but the reality is again anything that the system wants to discredit they will use terms like that and and they will use belief systems uh like that and so let me go over to here here you see somebody's post on facebook talking about this and and this is quite serious it is quite serious and what's interesting too is uh, i see one person commenting do you have any products about magnetic vortex wormhole generator very interesting well by the way he does have a patent for that as well his name was john was is john quincy st Clair, and legendary inventor of such world changing devices as the full body teleportation system patent obtained yeah, there's work that has to be done in these these patents. And and this link right here shows John Quincy St. Clair Jr., born May 21st, 1945. They say he died September 13th, 2021. Uh, Cindy doesn't get the feel, the usual feel that she would with somebody that had passed on. So it feels like he's died for the public's consumption, but may still very well be uh, alive. As you see, born South Africa, died, they say, in uh, Madison, Wisconsin. He went to Cornell. And as we can look at these patent applications, magnetic vortex wormhole generator, electric dipole mom moment propulsion system, rotating electrostatic propulsion system, bobbin electromagnetic field propulsion vehicle, rotor inductance propulsion system, hyperspace torque generator, uh, an, another hyperspace energy generator, cavitating oil, hyperspace generator, energy generator, walking through walls training system, electric dipole spacecraft, internet accessible mailbox system. Now that doesn't sound so crazy. Full body teleportation system, remote viewing amplifier, electric dipole moment propulsion system, permanent magnet propulsion system, triangular spacecraft, magnetic monopole spacecraft, and a water energy generator. It was interesting, too, uh, with the, the water system, it was talking about uh, a heavier form of water, which you actually can go and, and buy today, which may actually um, boost the immune system and the energy that goes to the cells. And, you know, being that we're now awakened, I would say, Cindy and I, to the point where we always look for little coincidences on uh, on things that we have been talking about because we know there really are no uh, coincidences. Everything is, it's, it's all about catching and recognizing synchronicities. So when we were talking about space as being really a less dense version of w the liquid water we have on the planet, 
yet more dense than the air, but in a way being a water and then seeing uh, this heavy water pop up with this apparently crazy, uh, you know, scientist uh, and Cindy getting strong impressions on him. You know, there's been books written about him. He has triggered a lot of uh, interest in the past. As you see here, The Mysterious Patents of John Quincy St. Clair. I'll, I'll see if it's still available. 244 pages, uh, as this is the type of fun one that I like to add to our collection, our little library. Uh, you know, very interesting. This is Ad Nocturne Media. Ad noc Noctum Media. Uh, a really good little video, 12 minutes long, and it goes into uh, this gentleman and his patents and uh, everything that we were talking about. And, you know, even tracking him down because you can track him down to not just Wisconsin, but uh, an apartment that he owned in Puerto Rico, which apparently... Uh, then he moved back to Wisconsin, then he sold his home in Wisconsin, then he had rented an apartment in Wisconsin, then he apparently died and is no longer around. Um, but again, what Cindy's picking up on is the energy feels like he didn't really necessarily die. Um, when you see the patents and the type of thing uh that he's talking about obviously those men in black the federal agents uh all sorts of secret uh societies everybody's going to take interest in this and you know this is the long strange history of people filing flying saucer patents the the reality again is that beings incarnate on this planet from many different places and you have some beings like teslas for instance, and perhaps also like this, uh, John St. Clair, who are very advanced, very, very advanced beings, and they could still tap into, let's say, their higher selves. And and they, they do have this knowledge, but this knowledge can't be out there for, you know, average public consumption when we live in a very, very dark matrix that controls every aspect of our lives and especially the control of information and disinformation. When you search Google Patents for John St. Clair, uh, the first thing that comes up is a John David, not a John Quincy uh, St. Clair. Now, this could be a totally different person, but <clears throat> what Cindy picks up on is the energy feels similar. So is this maybe his son? Is this uh, a relative? Is this him under just, just changing one name? And it's a company that pops up called Creighton Polymers. Um, and you see oil gels of controlled distribution block copolymers and ester oils. Viscosity index improver for lubricating oils. So those sound, you know, relatively calm and and tame compared to you know these other things. But again, and this is Creighton, by the way, um, that makes a lot of different uh, solvents and polymers. Uh, you know, again, the, when you have a brilliant mind like that, you could definitely put that brilliant mind to use in the military and in other. Uh, other sciences to take advantage of a mind like that. Um, I just thought this was curious to see this uh, and I wonder if there is any connection. But going back to the original uh, concept of, of walking through walls, uh, as he in his description there says, you know, after all, the human body averages 67% water. It depends on uh, our age and all it does vary we are higher uh, we have a higher percentage as a baby and then we tend to dry up as time goes on y you know there is nothing uh, that you will find in any of the Vedic texts that that says this is an impossibility quite the opposite when you when you look to the Hindu texts you you recognize this this is Hindu science this is Vedic science this is yogic science all this uh, is is in fact reality and can be achieved and can even be achieved without necessarily using 
uh, certain machinery. But what Cindy picks up on is this is a brilliant mind uh, that likes challenges. He, he's a very, very unique individual. And when I try to look at him like right now in the current, it, it's like he's being hidden. So I, I can't see him right now. And that tells me he's probably being hidden. It's like somebody is keeping him shielded. And, and as far as his mind is concerned, uh, it's unleashed. So this is someone very much like Tesla who has a direct... Um, information coming from different extraterrestrials that are giving him these ideas and he is putting them on paper he's one that the military keeps uh well they they need to keep him free to to a high degree because he's not going to be able to work if you put him in put him in a shell if you put him in a box he's not going to be able to get this information it would stress the body and it would it would cut off his communication so they've done a very good job from what i can see and what i'm picking up keeping keeping him covered up you know as far as where where he's at allowing him to have his freedom you know his his uh ability to go where he wants and put the information out that he needs and you'll notice when you start looking into this, um, he uh, when he's making the patents, there's information that gets asks or they ask for clarification and he just abandons it. He does not come back to give clarification. And what I picked up on that is, is either the military absorbed it and they took it from there. Or <laughs> he just doesn't feel like people need any more information. Or maybe maybe he cannot explain it. Because that's the one thing I have found to be the biggest challenge. Is the lack of vocabulary words to try to explain things in this dimension. We are so limited. So maybe he just feels like I, I could explain it again. But unless these people really grasp the concept... I'm not going to be able to put it on paper and, and that's a shame and, but it, it's it's the world we live in we came in here uh, to be limited just to push ourselves and then there is no putting any kind of a label on this guy like what does he do well you, you can't not you cannot define him so his, his character is very curious he's very much one of a kind um, he's, he's someone who's quite quirky. Most people absolutely will not understand him because he's working from different dimensions. He's speaking from different dimensions and he's trying to translate that here into the 3D. People just aren't going to get him. You know, I bet you anything if I looked at his chart, poor guy probably has like something like Kitu in the third house where he just speaks above people. It's not his fault. Doesn't make him better or worse or uh, anyone anything it's just a, a cross in communication where people don't get it so um, that's everything that I picked up on him pretty pretty interesting character yeah <clears throat> absolutely you know and you could work uh, deeper if you guys feel so inclined uh, to go deeper into these <laughs> wormholes <laughs> of information so to speak yeah, you know, again, what I'm blown away with uh, when I go into uh, like the Bhagavata Puranas and and other of these amazing texts uh, is is that everything is right there. Everything is right there. I mean, the reality of different lokas. Loka in Sanskrit means world. There are many different worlds. There are many different densities or dimensions if, if that you know helps our mind conceive of this you know there are layers upon layers upon layers of existence so what we have is you know occupying the exact same space that we are occupying are different consciousnesses uh, that are just simply uh operating at a different frequency it, it really can be so simply seen with turning an old school radio knob you know you turn this radio knob and you go from country music to news to sports radio and all you're doing is turning this knob but you're getting all these different programs well it's the same thing on on the densities that are here 
It, there's layers upon layers upon layers. Yet, the reality is the universe that we see is extraordinarily, and in our tiny little human mind, uh, incomprehensibly large. And it's just one single cell. One single cell. So when you start to realize just how big everything is, the all is, it's absolutely mind-blowing. And, and all that you can conceive of is consciousness. Everything. We are in an ocean of consciousness. We are in one tiny little, tiny little frequency band in this gigantic ocean of con consciousness. And yeah, it's just, it's, it's awe-inspiring and it's mind-blowing. And it really does shift our, our paradigm on Earth. We're so fixated with Earth, obviously, as you know, most of us are rooted, grounded, tied to it and can't seem apparently to escape it. But the reality is, you know, you can escape it. You, you can shift your consciousness and go outside of Earth and explore other um, other realms. And he even uh, talks about this, that he uh, remote views and, and he did remote view and he did uh, move away from planet Earth. And so, you know, again, uh, there's there's so much disinformation that goes on at, at so many different levels that we will gain some truths like here we are uh like we live in a bubble in an ocean of consciousness yeah well a, every single cell you can uh, liken to a bubble in an ocean of consciousness every single cell and yet the universe itself is just a bubble in an ocean of consciousness mm -hmm. you know when i ask for more understanding on the idea that he put out there of people walking through walls the the visualization that i'm given is that of a, a radio and you, you turn the radio on and you can hear the voices you can hear the information well if you take that box radio and you try to shove it through a wall you're not going to be able to do that however if you take that radio and you put it up against a wall that information is going to make it through the wall to the other side of the wall but you're not going to be able to take that physical vessel and shove it through the wall. So it's about separating the the human vessel from the information that it's receiving and sending that through time space, which is which is really really fun. I and and it's so it, it's so it's so very doable. You know, I, I I've had some curious experiences myself where. Um, every all the information in the universe has come to me all i need to do is direct my attention to a certain area and i'm flooded with all of that information but then the conundrum is is i cannot i cannot define it once i get back here it's so much like a, a dream that you're in that's very complicated and you wake up and you, you start to describe it and then you just lose yourself because you're at a lot a lack of words you're at a lack of information because of the 3d reality that we're in um, so I, I love this because it's about uh, finding out how far we can stretch our consciousness within this 3D world. Yes, uh, and again, there's so much um, <laughs> to uncover in this one's in Sanskrit. But, you know, it, I would strongly recommend deep diving if you are so inclined in, into... Uh, some of the Hindu texts because they talk all about this. They talk all about uh, the reality of different types of vehicles that humans have encountered, the, the Vimanas. And, and they do vary. Some are pure energy. Some are pure consciousness. Others are mechanical. There's all of the above. It, it's mind-blowing, and yet everything that we wonder about is pretty much covered in there. Uh, it's just a matter of deep dive in and meditate on and and see what comes to you. Well, again, I will link this video very well done. And, um, you know, if you are so inclined, uh, check out Ad Noctum Media. There are so many good channels out there that are, are just trying to look for answers. The projection of spiritual mod modules of the human energy field to distant locations 
in order to see, communicate, and interact with other entities who live in subspace and hyperspace co-dimensions of the universe is very possible. And this is exactly what, what Cindy does all day long, every single day. I go somewhere else and I'll never forget the first time that I did um, pop out a body and I went somewhere and I actually landed in the Vatican and it's like I could see everyone. I could feel all of their energies and it was just so so strange because it wasn't anything that I was aiming to do I, I just sat down to do a, a normal meditation mantra and then boom all, all of a sudden I was there so it, it does take some time to uh, learn to lasso these energies within yourself and then direct them in a way that you want them to be utilized it's definitely doable we can all do it, but we're at different stages of this. And and some people came here and they chose not to do that. They chose not to do, they, they chose to have the 3D experience and that's their personal spirituality. But there's, for those that are seeking, those that are trying to crawl up and out of this place and have a deeper understanding, well, we like to know more. Yeah, absolutely. And like what Cindy was picking up on, she said to me, well, you know, he's very much like uh, Alloys, Allo Ali, oh, yeah. our Ali Ermiler, who we connected with through studying his prophecies. Um, and Ali Alloys is is very very interested in seeing what he can take with him uh, when he comes into incarnation. You know, how good can he be at his gifts, which is seeing timelines, reading timelines. Uh, amongst other things when he's actually embodied because that's the challenge that's such a huge challenge but this is what goes on sometimes beings like to go and they pull in this information they become embodied in a body and then they bring that information back and they see how far they can expand themselves. So Ali, he was one who was very interested in his psychic abilities and how how could he get how could he somehow get close to timelines? Because that's the challenge with psychic abilities. Like you're not going to get a, a, a date stamped. You you're just not gonna get that because there is no time outside of this place. There's absolutely no time. So for him, he feels this is a challenge and this is what Alloys wants to do. And he's currently kind of watching his own, his own incarnation unfold here in the 3D um, as, as it unfolds. So for him, that's what he does. And then this guy here, uh, this John Quincy Sinclair, he goes to the other side. He gets this information. When he comes back, he gets embodied and he tries to put it on paper. I mean, that's a challenge. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And when she was mentioning uh, Ali watching intently right now, because this is the time that he was really, fo well, this is one of the times that he was really, really focused on. He wants to see how accurate uh, his prophecies were. But of course, the variables are the consciousnesses of all of us. Can we change timelines? Absolutely. You know, and this, nothing is set in stone. And this is why uh, you have the control system constantly giving us prophecies uh, to set it in stone and saying, you know, this is the creator of the all and there's nothing you can do about it. You are just playing it out. Well, nothing could be further from the truth because all of our consciousness are, are, are interacting and we've delved down that road before can you change your timeline i think you can i think individuals can absolutely change their timelines it's easier than changing the timeline of the collective that's the bigger challenge to changing the timeline of the collective so if you wanted to you know and and you were just concerned with yourself yes i think you can shift your paradigm so that you might you know, awaken in a world, so to speak, that is, is not so, you know, going through all the darkness, trials, and tribulations. What about those other consciousnesses that are on the planet? Well, you know, there are many souls that their entire purpose is to come in and to shift the paradigm, to shift the collective. So, you know, that's where you get into people that will say, uh, things like you know don't 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 even look at the negative ignore the negative just focus on the positive well you know for the individual if that's your you know your focus and your and your intent then that's fine you, you may be able to shift your own paradigm uh, and 
yet it wouldn't shift the paradigm of the masses. You would just shift your own paradigm to a different timeline. Uh, as far as shifting the paradigm of the masses that are still going to go through the trials and tribulations, that requires an awakening of a high degree. Indeed. As always, guys, look forward to your comments. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.